Hello, uh, welcome. We're going to give everybody just a see if there's anyone else joins. So we're going to just begin in just a couple of minutes. Okay, um, we can go ahead and get started. Um, feel free definitely to, um, to leave any questions or comments in the chat, but also since it's a really small group, feel free to just, you know, say something as we're, as we're talking. Um, I'm Rebecca Carr. I'm a professor of practice in digital design. Um, and joining me also is... Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Brittany Yandel. I am the senior academic advisor who would work with you on courses and scheduling and graduation and all that fun stuff. So um, just a little bit about SOPA. Um, so Tulane was founded in the early 1800s, 1834, as a medical college of Louisiana. And really not long off after that, Tulane began to offer um, continuing education for adult learners. And so this um, SOPA being targeted towards adult learners and locals has been going on for over 130 years. Um, so obviously we've really expanded what it started with, but it has been around for a long time and it has been a, a big part of Tulane's mission. And we have lots of, um, SOPA is very flexible. So there's full and part-time options. There's online options on campus. Um, right now we have um, what's called a compound classroom. Uh, we're calling it the cell, which was actually conceived of pre-COVID and we're really super glad that we have it now. What it is, is it's a kind of a small-ish classroom that has really nice technology, a big board. And so students can join on Zoom on this really large, crisp screen. And so students can be um, from, they don't have to be local in New Orleans, they can be somewhere else. Um, and they can join and the camera will show the students that are in, you know, in the classroom sitting at the table. And so it's, it's designed to really feel like everyone's together in the same room um, and just kind of take some of the pain points away from online learning by, by having that uh, critique setting and cohesive classroom. Um, the other thing that we have is we have classes in the evening because we're, you know, partly focused on working adults. Um, but we still do have day classes and even sometimes Saturday morning morning classes. So um, online learning at SOPA, you're probably, um, you know, there's a lot more online learning going on around the world right now um, because of our current situation. But Online learning has been a focus at SOPA for a long time. Um, we have on, sta on staff um, instructional designers whose whole job it is is to work with professors to build really cohesive um, online classes. And in, in at least in the digital design um, program, the we work with these instructional designers, especially for the classes that are in the cell. And we have the classes built in essentially an online format, meaning there's resources, there's, you know, the, it's very robust through what we use a platform called Canvas. So it's really robust there, but then we also have live Zoom meetings or in-person meetings together. So it's like the, it's like a mix. It's got this online um, component, but also um, with the live session. So yeah, so SOPA has, has been doing this a while and is, is really robust in the online. Uh, and this is just some statistics about how many students have completed online coursework. There are some master's programs um, and certificates that are completely online and, and has been this way for a while. Um, and we also, yes, train the faculty um, 
in online instruction. So digital design. So the mission of the digital design program is really to like kind of bridge the gap between art, fine art and technology. And then what's really important in this field is being able to solve problems for clients, right? Um, with visual thinking and to, to really think about who the audience is and how can this design problem solve their specific challenge. Um, so yeah, we also want students to come out of whether it's the Bachelor of Arts program or the, the post back certificate with portfolios that will then help them, you know, get get a job. So we're always um, building those and we also try to really um, bring in speakers and have networking events and have alumni, um, you know, as a part of the students experience. So we offer um, two degrees and I kind of looked through um, you guys who had registered before and it looks like we have a little bit of a mix of both. Um, so we have a Bachelor of Arts in Digital Design um, and we have three tracks which we'll talk about shortly. One is Graphic Design, one's Interactive Design and one is Game Arts. Um, and so yes, we offer a, a Bachelor in that and then also a, a post-bac certificate which is for students who already have a Bachelor degree but it can be a Bachelor's degree in anything. Um, and they also choose from one of those three tracks. So I just kind of explained this a little bit, but what is a post back certificate? It's actually kind of a, a really nice thing. Um, I know I would have been interested in it at some point in my um, education. It's if say, you know, you have a, a bachelor's degree in something and maybe you want to either expand what that degree is for or you want to kind of change gears, but you don't have to completely start over. You can just take basically 10 courses um, directly about your, um, your area of concentration and, and then you will get um, a post back certificate. And we kind of work with the post back students to really choose those 10 courses that are going to help them most depending on the experience level they have coming in. Okay, so um, let's now talk about the three tracks. Um, the first one is the graphic design track and that is what I Primarily, I kind of teach into, but that's what I primarily, um, it's what my background is in for sure. Um, so we kind of prepare for careers in branding, print design, I mean, poster design, that's just kind of a fun element of, of print design, um, typography, book design, publication design. Um, and then also, you know, with the graphic design track, there definitely is interactive components that we want to make sure the students know. Um, so here's a few of the courses that are in um, in that track, but there are definitely more. And on the right, you'll see um, some student work. And one, the first one is was actually done for we call this um, service learning. It was for a local nonprofit. They had an event, and we worked with them to um, come up with a promotional materials to advertise the event. And um, it was a really great experience. And this is student. Um, Nicole Macon, she hand lettered this actually. Um, and then the one below um, was, uh, was, was a class project and this actually won an Addy Award. And it was for a fictional uh, Mufalata Festival or a fictional poster for a real Mufalata Festival. And then the interactive design track and definitely the graphic design and interactive tracks work hand in hand. They have a, a lot of the same courses you take in both of them. So if you know you were maybe not sure which one to go for it, a lot of the beginning core classes are the same. Um, but interactive design prepares students for careers in UX, which is user experience and UI, uh, user interface, and then web design, app design, social media. Um, so here's a few of the courses. On the right is also um, student, a student app design. This is student Tamsin Jenkins. Um, it's, this was basically like almost like a dating app to find, to adopt a pet. And we have some really great um, professors in there. And then, then the last track is um, slightly different. It kind of um, lives in its, on its own a little bit more. Um, it's the game art and animation track. Um, and so this is the field of, you know, obviously it's animation, it's character design, it's 3D modeling. and um, these are some of the courses our professors that teach in this are all working um, design software. So our head professor works for InXile Entertainment. Um, he works for the local office. He's also before that he um, 
was in Los Angeles and has, has been doing this for like 25 plus years. Um, Josh Dropberg, who's great. Um, the professor who teaches the, uh, the 3D modeling, um, he's also amazing. I mean, just seeing these professors work is really, um, is really, really interesting to me and they're, they're amazing. So the, I mean, they are in the field. Okay, and so here's, we have more faculty than this, but I'm just gonna, this is just like a small sampling. Um, Dr. Garcia is the first one. She couldn't be with us today. She's the program director, okay? So she's kind of the, the head of the whole um, digital design track. She um, is amazing. She's really hands-on with the students. She will work with each student uh, along with Brittany to kind of help choose their classes and steer them. Um, Josh Dirtberg is the lead animator for In Exile. I just mentioned him. Um, Peter Giafria is a motion designer. He teaches motion um, in the interactive track, and he's a really amazing illustrator and um, motion designer. Um, Samantha Barnes is teaches a lot of classes in interactive design. She has a brain that I just can't even comprehend. She's <laughs> is very, very technical. She does web design. Uh, she understands social strategy. She um, teaches a little bit of app design, but she's very, um, very good as well. And then we have a few more on the next page, I believe. Um, this is a, a new course. Um, John Carr teaches copywriting. He has been an award-winning copywriter for over 20 years. He's very, very good. Um, and this class students have raved about. Um, it is, it's really important. A lot of times designers, um, whether it be in the interactive or graphic design end up, even though there are people who specifically just do copywriting, sometimes the, you know, it's a smaller firm and you end up having to write it. And so he'll give you the kind of basics of that. Um, Jessica Peterson owns um, a letterpress studio um, here in New Orleans, and she has classes where the students actually go to her letterpress studio, and that's really, um, really fun. She also teaches a few other classes. Um, and then Aisha Champagne, um, she has worked a long time um, in publication and editorial design, um, and she teaches our foundation class. And we have others, but that was, those are just a few to give you an idea. Um, so yeah, so in addition to the classes, um, we try to have a really um, robust student experience. So we try to bring in speakers, whether the speakers come to the class or a specific event. Um, we try to attend conferences, you know, in, well, now I guess still we try to expose students at least to the virtual conferences. But when there are local conferences or even something nearby, we have tried to get students to them. Um, and, and that's just to, you know, have students have exposure to, you know, what's around them um, and definitely, you know, professionals in the field. So one thing we have is an AIGA, which AIGA stands for the American Institute of Graphic Arts. And that, that really runs the gamut of anything kind of related to design. We have a student group. So it's a student run student organization and we put on events. Um, they have things like, you know, time to work on your final projects before exams and sometimes just events for fun like pumpkin decorating or things that are kind of creative but not specifically in the classroom so um, that's a student group we also participate in the um, Addy awards this is done by the ad council um, and so there is awards that are regional and then i think local regional national and actually our students have won some national awards which is really great and so we help students um, apply for these and you know get to go to the ceremony and all that. Um, and yeah, like I said, we have speakers come in. Um, yeah, so that's some of what we do. Okay, and I will let uh, Brittany take it from here. Right. Hi, everyone. Um, so as I said earlier, I will be your academic advisor. Um, so I am part of the student support and success team that you will experience as a student at SOPA. Um, so what that means is you get assigned an advisor who will be me. And what, what I do is I work with you to make sure you can register for the correct courses. Um, Dr. Garcia will help you choose the courses that you wanna take. She kind of directs you on the major side of things, um, but I help with the actual technical side of getting registered, adding and dropping courses, um, any policies or procedures, any resources that you might need on campus. I'm kind of your liaison, your, your first, first person to go to for anything like that. And I will connect you to whoever it is you need to be connected to. Um, aside from me, we also have a career counselor on campus. Um, 
when you when we actually get physically fully back on campus, uh, Cynthia is there pretty much every day and open for student appointments. Um, Cynthia Washington is the career counselor. She can help you build a resume. She can work with you on mock interviews, um, you know, training you on um, how to act professionally if you're going to a meeting and maybe you've never done that before and you just want some some role play training. She's really great at those types of things. So kind of anything you need career wise, um, she's a great resource that's available to you as a student um, for free. Um, aside from that, we have all of these expert faculty that Rebecca talked about previously. Um, they also offer, um, I, I can't even tell you how much career advice and just kind of advice in general on the field and, and next steps and um, you know, they have such, uh, such a wide range of industry experience that you really get to work with them one on one and build connections with them that are going to help you post graduation and hope and help you, um, you know, in your career moving forward. So a lot of resources available to you. Um, we also have as Tulane as a whole has a great, a huge alumni network that you will be automatically added to um, once you finish your program. What that means is you are connected with job boards national internationally um, if you you know need help being connected to a particular company and there's a Tulane um, alumni who works there we have a you know a great way to connect with people like that so um, lots of great resources while you're a student and after you finish so um, you're re really investing when you come to Tulane. Um, applying is really easy. Um, if you have not applied already and you're, uh, you need the link for that, you can always just Google Tulane SOPA apply, but you can also go to our website and it's right at the top in a bright banner. Um, it's really easy. The application fee for undergrads is $40. However, that will be waived for attending this webinar. Um, if you have any questions about that, feel free to reach out to us. Um, you do need to upload a clear photo ID. Um, and you do need to send transcripts, official transcripts. They can send, be sent electronically or physically. Um, electronically is quicker, um, and those can be sent to SOPA records at Tulane.edu. I'll put that email in the chat. Um, but that tech, usually sending them uh, via PDF email goes a lot quicker than uh, snail mail. Again, if you have any questions about applying, please feel free to reach out to any of us. These are the application deadlines. So for spring, you want to get your application in by January 1. For summer, it's May 15th. And for fall, it's August 1. Um, tuition and financial aid. So um, even as a post-bac, if you're coming as a post-bac or a bachelor's student, you will be at the undergraduate tuition rate, which is 524 a credit. Uh, the tuition is subject to change every academic year. Um, so right now, 524 um, is what it will be for both spring and summer, so spring 2021 and summer 2021. Um, but please note that tuition is subject to change each academic year. Um, we do have financial aid options available. Um, you are assigned a financial aid counselor through Tulane. If you need help being contact connected to that person, please let me know. I'd be more than happy to send you their contact information. Um, the types of aid, uh, federal grants, federal loans, and then through SOPA, we also offer a 20% discount for active duty military veterans, teachers, and first responders. Um, if you have any questions at all about financial aid or types of aid, please feel free to reach out to me. And if I can't answer it, I will connect you to the correct person. Credits for prior learning. So uh, what this is, is if you um, say you've been working in the field of design um, and you have all this experience in let's say Photoshop, for example, and you want to get credit for that course, um, we can accept up to 24 credits of prior learning. Um, what that requires is you take a portfolio class, it's a three credit undergraduate 1000 level class that kind of teaches you how to build the portfolio to get the credit for prior learning. Um, so you take that class, you build one portfolio per each class that you hope to get credit for. Um, you have an advisor working with you throughout the whole process of that. Um, and it's a good way to earn credits. Um, you can earn up to 60 transfer credits as an undergraduate student. Um, so let's say you only have 20 credits of undergrad that you've taken at another institution. The credits for prior learning is another way to get you up to that 60 credit maximum of transfer. So um, it's just another way to help our our students, we know everyone comes from a different background. Some of you have been working in the field for some time. Some of you have some undergraduate credit already. So this is just kind of a way to, um, you know, help balance that and help get you ahead while we can.
If there are any other questions, of course, you can always contact myself or Rebecca um, and also Dr. Garcia, whose contact information is on the screen right here. Um, I'm going to put my email contact information in the chat. Uh, feel free to reach out anytime. Um, I answer my email all times of day and night. So um, you may receive emails from me really late as a student. You can also email me really late and I will most likely answer. So um, please reach out if you need anything. Does anyone have any questions while we're here? Feel free to come off of mute, shout them out. I also just put my email in the chat, but yes, um, while we're here, if anybody can think of anything or want to tell us a little bit more about what you're, what you're interested in pursuing, please feel free. All right, looks like Thomas might have a question. Go ahead and type it in the chat, Thomas. We can. Talk about it there. So no, you don't need to have a portfolio to apply for that. Um, if you're looking to get any course credit for maybe any previous um, design coursework that you've taken at other institutions, you might need, um, you will need uh, two to three pieces to look at um, to review for transfer credit for that. But if you're just applying to the program, you do not need a portfolio starting out. McKenna, any questions on your end? Um, yeah, I was trying to type that out. I also was having struggles um, with my mic. Oh, my audio. Let me put it. Um, I was wondering for the digital program, um, since it's connected to the art bill as well, will we need a portfolio for that? And if so, like, what would you suggest, like, adding in there? Because I go, I go to NOCA, um, and I have like a lot of different mediums of art. And so I didn't know if I should like mainly just put my digital work in there or like kind of like a broad of like everything. So you do actually do not need a portfolio, but um, it would be great if you have one together. So are you, so you would be good doing the BA program, I assume if you're, anyway. yeah, I mean, it would be great if you could um, set up a meeting with myself or Dr. Garcia and show us your work because maybe coming from NOCA, some of the beginning classes you could um, kind of test, I mean, not really test out of, but use the portfolio and we could say, okay, you don't really need this, you've had something really similar. And then that would just can give you more room for the advanced classes. So I would definitely recommend um, doing that. Show some of the fine art, even, even that, because what we found is that we actually added a, a class called Foundations of Art because a lot of students really were struggling with sketching, which is really an important part of kind of getting started, even when it's going to be something that's, you know, done completely digitally. So, um, and they really appreciated that course. So like that would be something like, I don't think you coming from NOCA probably need that one, for example. Um, and yes, yeah, just some, maybe some of the other foundations classes. So I think you, you should definitely get one together, but I would show a range of your work. Um, if that, you know, definitely if you have any background, if I don't know if you do Photoshop or Illustrator there. Yeah, so yeah, so some of that work and, um, and yeah, just more of the technical drawing skills would be great. Okay, thank you. Sure. Yeah. And Thomas, the same for you as well. If you've got a portfolio together, or if you wanted to put one together and, and you think that you might be able to, um, you know, not have to take some of the foundation courses due to your background, um, that's also a good reason to have a portfolio. So if you have it, that's great. We would love to look at it, um, but it's not necessary to put one together to apply. Um, is my mic working now? Yeah. Oh, okay. So um, for me, I'm in my senior year of high school and I've just been studying animation um, like by myself. And um, I'm wondering if um, I would just like apply directly to the major or? 
how that works. Okay, so on the application portal, what you'll do is um, you'll first look for the undergraduate application. And then from there, you'll look for the Bachelor of Arts in Digital Design. Um, and it may have a category for you to select either graphic design, interactive, or game art. Um, and if it does, that's where you can select it. Um, but the application that you'll be looking for is the Bachelors of Arts in Digital Design. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Um, sorry. Uh, when you had said earlier that if I were to make um, a portfolio and to meet with one of you guys about it, would that be after I would get accepted or during the process of filling out my application? That would probably be closer to after you were accepted, closer to when you're looking to register for that first semester. Okay, thank you. Yeah. What, um, what are you studying specifically at NOGA? I'm just curious. Um, so I'm a level four, which means I'm like um, the top part, like ranking, there's like levels one, well, beginners to four. And so uh -huh. since I started at NOGA as a freshman, um, I got to get to level four. Sometimes people start later on, so they don't get that chance. Oh, I got you, okay. Um, I've studied pretty much like everything from welding to ceramics to digital media, um, building our own cameras, shooting with old fashioned cameras, new cameras, videography. Um, we have a spinning room to do um, pottery, printmaking, the basics of like 2D oil painting. Um, and then we also, I love this part of the year, but we get, there's guest artists who will come in that are like well-known artists and they will stay for a week and you get to choose which artist that's gonna be like your mentor. And uh -huh. so you get to like learn something that NOCA doesn't really like teach. So like, for example, um, the past, my junior year, I learned how to um, shoot um, videos and make um and make oh what's it called um, um um it's such a basic word the the movies that are about people <laughs> i forget documentaries Document they, <laughs> yeah i learned how to shoot a documentary and so it's really like very wide ranged so pretty much like everything <laughs> that sounds amazing that sounds just like an amazing experience and you'll be starting off just like i don't know we just with so much knowledge, you know, go, it's been being able to really specifically figure out what you want to do. And I think that's great. Yeah, I love NOCA. It's like they like, we also like take like college level courses. So a lot of times it like transfers in. And um, yeah, I think it, it was definitely a good decision for college reasons. Yeah. So you go there all day. You're not like a, yeah. yeah. Okay. That freshman year, um, because it's such an intense, schooling um and so different our, our day starts at eight o'clock and we don't get out of school till 6 30 um yeah. because we do academic well we i did academics from eight in the morning till 3 45 and then from 3 45 till 6 30 was our arts but uh, after freshman year our arts start at 1 15 just because freshman year you have to get like your foreign languages out of the way your pe and it's like those extra things that you just have to do yeah but yeah. Oh, that's a long day. Yeah. And NOCA also, it's not just visual arts. We have, um, there's a lot, there's culinary, um, dance, jazz, classical, um, media arts, writing, they have everything. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Thomas, did you have any other questions or? No, I don't. Okay. Where are you at school, Thomas? Um, I go to uh, my community high school, Jupiter High School. I live in Florida. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, great. So would you be thinking of moving here or would you be taking courses online? I think I'd be thinking of moving. Great. Yeah. New Orleans is a great city. So yeah. I endorse the move. <laughs> yeah, it's a fun place to live. Great. Well, if you guys uh, have any follow-up questions that, that come to you after the fact, um, you have our emails in the chat. Um, I also put the email address to send your digital transcripts to you. So 
um, feel free to reach out if anything comes up after we get off of here. I know sometimes questions come up and you know you didn't think about them before, but we are here, so give us a shout. Thank you. All right, All right. Thank you guys. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Bye.